pools, isn't it? A crash course. Yeah, it crashes all the time, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. right. Can you see my screen, Jeff? Mm. I can see you. <laughs> yeah, both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, so we're going to go. Right. We're going to do a few of the um, the various little tools on uh, editing the things that hopefully will uh, make your images a bit better. Uh, so let's nip into Lightroom and wherever it's gone, there's Lightroom. Right, okay. Uh, no particular reason for that picture other than it's cute. Right, let's have a look what we've got in. Nice blue behind. Yeah. Uh, so, trying to find something that's worth Yeah, let's just try this one. So, spot retouching. Um, just trying to check whether I've got any dust. Yeah, I've got some dust spots on that, I think. Even that will then dirt on this. I think you'll find just about there is a, a dirt spot. You may or may not be able to see it. Yeah, quite large, round. Yeah, yeah, sort of there. In fact, there's one sort of diagonally to the right to it as well, I think. Let's see if I can push the contrast up a bit, a bit to um, emphasise it a bit. So, no, that's not doing it. No. There you go. Oh, yeah. oh it's difficult to see. It's break that way. Yeah, you can see it there, right. So anyway, you'll have to take my mark word for it. If, um, I don't know if there's another way of doing that, getting that to show Yeah, go, go, to the, go to the spot tool and then do visualise, which is always, yeah. always fun. Yeah. <laughs> which is... Right. Okay, so... What we're going to do is look at these tools up the top here. I'm going to have to close you down for a second. Right. Oh, so two sets. Um, ah, go away. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so with um, uh, spot removal, um, so there's various tools. We've looked at the crop tool, which was R, um, earlier on, and now we're moving across to the spot tool. So. Uh, normally, you, you've, you've done all your, your major adjustments here, and now we're looking at things that we want to change in a, at a time. So you've got the spot removal tool, which is for removing bits out of your picture that you don't want. So let's go for something major. Let's say this um, nuclear rig over here on the left-hand side. What my cursor got? Oh, I know one cursor. Um, and we want to remove it. Now... We can change the size of our brush using this slider here. So if I slide it out there, we'll get a big brush. Uh, move it around. Or you can use the square brackets keys. Um, so left square bracket makes it smaller. And right square bracket makes it bigger. Um, that's a one, that is one of those shortcuts that is well worth knowing because amazingly it is the same in Photoshop as it is in Lightroom, um, and... As it is in Affinity, actually. Yeah, oh right, yeah, so that is one that's definitely worth knowing then. Yes. So, we're going to try and clone out this, um, uh, what is it, it's an oil rig, I know it's, a, it's, yeah. an outlet flow for, it's an outlet flow for a um, nuclear power station. So, um, it's spoiling our rural scene and we want to get rid of it. So. We have two options up here on the right hand side. We've got clone or heal. And let's see what the difference they make is in this case. So I'm, first of all, what I'm going to do is just brush across the area I want to remove. And then the, in theory, artificial intelligence of um, uh, Lightroom will try and pick the closest match to remove it. And this time, amazingly, it's actually picked something that's pretty close, which is fairly unusual. Normally it picks something that's either off the screen or uh, somewhere else. Because so, um, so what we've got is this is the area we want to replace over here on the left, and this is what we're going to replace it with over on the right. Um, so 
I might decide that I want to move it. As I move it, you see, as I'm moving the right-hand side, the left-hand side is changing. And then I might want to move it up a little bit. Um, uh, so are you still on heel at the moment, Chris? Yeah, it's still on heel on the right-hand side, yeah? Okay. All I'm doing now at the moment is just moving the, moving the, moving the right hand, the source, as it were, uh, to the destination. Now, I moved it, first of all, with the, with the mouse uh, pointer, and then um, I started moving it with the, um, with the arrow keys because I wanted it more precise because in this case, um, it's going to be more useful to be able to see um, exactly how that lines up. So as I move it up and down with the arrow key, just about there is about right. So that's heel at the moment. And um, let's try what happens if we change it to clone. So the difference between heel and clone is a bit. Um, so, so if you clone it from one place to the other, um, it's so we're, if we do a clone, you see down the bottom we've got an almost exact copy of the area we've copied to. Whereas if we heal, it tends to blend it in a bit more. Um, the actual technical difference kind of eludes me a lot. It's equivalent to cloning and stamping in Photoshop and then blurring it a bit, I think, is heal. Um, and uh, so that's basically um, the difference between clone and heal. If you're not getting the results you want, switch to the other one. Um, <laughs> Clone, especially if you're around the edge of your picture or your source is around the edge of the picture, um, try switching between the two because sometimes it will heal to the edge of the picture so it will blend to a white area off the side of the page, which is no good to you. Um, then we have this other area here, which is feather. Um, and that is the um, amount we're going to blend in around the edge of the selected area so if we go full feather we've um we've only selected the only bit that's actually going to be solidly cloned is the very center and then everything else is going to blur out which is why that sort of um oil rig is sort of 50 percent transparent as it as it merges in um it might be easier to show it on the uh, on a new brush on a new brush, yep. All right, close it. Um, let's add a new one. So, yeah, so if you say, yeah, so if you say, see that ring there. Um, I think shift brackets does the uh, feather. Yeah, shift brackets, is it? Yeah, okay. So if you... If you see the difference, so if I, re if I give it 100% feather, the center area is going to be the solid bit, and then between the two circles is going to be a blur. It's going to sort of merge it in slowly, soften it. Um, and then if we go the other way, shift, feather zero, then it's going to be a really hard edge. So it's the, it's the edge of your clone that you want to do. So... Um, so I might, for instance, I don't know, climb out this area here. with that. And that's with a lot of feathering. So a lot of feathering, you'll end up with some of the original stuff on there. If we slide it down to not much feathering, we can remove it completely. And at the moment it's healing. So it's kind of blurring the two together. Whereas if you clone it, it should just basically copy the stuff from the left to the right. Um, let's just show you the difference there, because that's kind of, it's got kind of a hard edge on it, that one, because I did no feathering. Um, so if I want to, because Lightroom's non-destructive, as soon as I go back into the clone tool, you see on the top left, we've got this dot appears, and this one. So I can go back and change any of these at any time. I don't, um, it's, you can always go back and decide to clone in a different way. So, for instance, if I then click on this dot, I'm immediately now it's got gone to a black dot. I'm immediately controlling that, and I can reduce the feathering or increase the feathering 
reduce the harshness of the edge, say to about that much, and then close it. And it's a slightly better blur. I mean, you probably wouldn't do that in one go. You'd probably do it in two or three, but um, you kind of see the idea there. Um, the other thing you can do is opacity. So, um, so we take this one again, so I click on that. And when, as soon as you click on it, it remembers that this one was a heel and that one was a clone. Um, you can change the opacity. So opacity is zero, i.e. not there, um, invisible. Um, so as we make it more opaque, you're blurring it in. So it's another way of blending in that clone or that healing brush. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody happy with the kind of tool? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and I'll see if I can get this right, because it never normally works for me, but we'll give it a bit of a go. What you can do is you can um, clone a line. So I think if I do click, shift, click, no, it doesn't work. There is a way. Do you know how to do it, Jeff? Um, Clone a straight line. Yeah, just hold the shift key down and draw it. Cliff, yeah, that's what I just did. Oh, oh control Z. So, oh, that's it, yeah, all right. So, yeah, so if you want to clone a completely straight line like that, uh, you hold the shift, as Jeff said, hold the shift key down. So that's spot removal in a nutshell. Um, which Chris, can I just highlight that if you put, yeah. can you put the toolbar up? The toolbar, T. T, T, T toolbar, yeah. Oh yeah, visualise spots, that's the one you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, always. Uh, yeah, the other thing, I'm um, pointing to the running screen, where it says always, yeah, if you click on those little arrows, you get other options. So if you get auto, you can move, because sometimes the spots just disappear, because you move your cursor off to the left or to the right or to the top or the bottom, if you go, uh, uh, then the spots disappear. Then you can actually have a look to see what the what it looks like. Right. Yeah. So if you want to tick visualize spots for a second. Yeah, and then just try changing the. Ah, uh, there we go. That was that one I was trying to show, isn't it? Yeah. Just there. It's quite. So you're effectively just, especially in a sky, you're looking for. That's the skies are where you normally see your um. Yeah, but all, what I was going to say was though that um, if you un untick visualize spots for a second. Yep. Got rid of that one. Down the bottom, yeah. Now, if you move your as you've got, uh, if you select uh, where it says selected, then go to auto. Yeah. And then move your cursor off to the right or the left, they disappear. And then come back as soon as you, you come and come back on. Sometimes oh, right. it, it gets caught out and they don't appear and you can't think where they are. So it's worth putting always on. Oh, okay. There you go, always. And that visualize spots is the is the one for seeing seeing dust spots in your sky. Yeah, but I'd forgotten about see I don't I never had the toolbar on, that's why I forget these things. Right. Um, the other thing you can do. Um, with all of these, and so this is something I haven't, haven't mentioned. Um, so to visualize spots off with any of these tools, all the way down here, you've got an on off switch, so you can switch it off and then switch it back on, so you can see the effect of that panel at any one time. Um, so that's quite kind of handy. Um, so if you see. Again, whatever the calibration does, you can switch it off and on. Um, so that's basically that. So that's your cloning tool and your healing tool. Um, any questions on that? Does that just work with the spot or will it work with like brushes and things like that as well? 
It's well, so you've got a brush. So this is a brush. So we could, if we wanted to, for instance, have a go at cloning out the front of the boat. So you can draw any shape you like. Right. Personal note, every time, everything I ever draw when I'm cloning always seems to end up looking like a willy. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, just see, I just go, I'll just draw it. Why have I drawn? No. Anyway, um, so yeah, you could clone out any shape you like by ch choosing the size. Of it. So, um, it's a good bet to use sometimes use a smaller brush brush and just put hundreds of them down just to yeah, clone yeah. it out. Right. Yeah, so uh, so if you were taking this out, what you'd probably do is take your if you want to get rid of all the say this um, rope, you'd probably take that bit. Oh, yeah, let's find it from there, wasn't it? From over there, I want it to clone. Then you might do this bit. And so forth. So that tends to be the way you you do it, rather than try and do massive amounts. But you can clone any any particular shape you wanted, really. Um, I'm assuming, Chris, because of the the what we really ended up with a willy. Were you um, moving on from Willis? When you when you um, took out that rig on the left, you yeah. have to do it in part to, to create a solid wave. Because obviously that way well, well, down the bottom as well. It's, yeah, or what I could do is I could then um, you would you would do it bit by bit. Decide, right? Yeah, decide to take that area and clone it from there. Now, oh, that's a good idea. Isn't it? Yes, sort of, and then yeah. maybe yeah. reduce the opacity. Or um, we'll start start with a smaller brush and uh, not yeah, do that. Um, yeah, yeah, do it bit by bit. Honestly, if you are doing a lot of cloning and mucking about, then it's time to get into Photoshop or an, an Affinity, to be honest. Um, if I was going to reduce this to just the boat on a beach, then I would go into Photoshop and do it in half a dozen different layers. Um, because the clone tool is was originally developed for just taking off, you know, marks and spots off people's faces, not... Um, uh, any dust box on lenses or uh, cameras yeah so um yeah uh yeah it is quite processor intensive and it will slow you down quite considerably yeah so so that's that's cloning um the next one across is red eye correction has anybody ever used this no right it once no. yeah what you want to do if you've got a problem with red eye is get your flash off your camera. <laughs> yeah. I think I've only ever used it once when repairing somebody else's um somebody else's picture. Obviously just to see what it does. Yeah, it might have far too professional for um that sort of thing. Um but yeah, you say I mean red eye is only a function of the fact that the flash is on the same virtually on the same axis as the lens. Um so if you move it off, then you solve the problem. Graduate your filter tool is the next one down. Right. My favourite. So here we go. Um, see if we've got any, anything else to work with. Uh, yeah, let's go for our beach hunts. So, got some beach huts. Um, looking at the sky, want to make the sky um a bit different to what it is so let's d to whip into developer tools and then who the hell ever remembers this m for graduated filter <laughs> by the way spot removal was q yeah quickly and get brushes, the spot and oh brushes, no. brushes, brushes k <laughs> yeah yeah it's just it's like they, they run out of letters, so a lot of them don't make a lot of sense and they're quite hard to remember. So, uh, is that radio filter shift in, you guys? Get <laughs> yeah. So, the way the graduate filter works is you draw down from say the top of the screen and you get three lines. Um, these wobble all over the place unless you hold the shift key down, in which case they will snap into being purely vertical, uh, purely horizontal. 
or um, vertical. It's interesting. Don't you? Yeah, purely, is that purely vertical? Is that let me rotate it or not? No, that's interesting. Pure vertical doesn't work with a shift? It does. If you draw a new one. If you draw a new one, but if you try and let all the one existing one, it doesn't, doesn't work. But anyway, so let's put our, our blend on here. So it's quite a big blend. So you've got three lines. Um, you've got start, middle, and end, basically, as far as I understand it. Um, unless somebody wants to tell me different. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide up to the top here and say my filter wants to start about there and let's see what happens. What we're going to do with this one, just going to bang the exposure right down just to show what it does. So hopefully you can see as I drag that down, take the top down. So the top is going to be really dark. Um, actually, let's take everything down. So you can really see what it's doing. So it basically starts from the top. Um, it's where it starts getting dark. Or it's, it will dark above that, all the way down to here where it starts fading out. Um, so let's do a more realistic version of that. So if I double click on effect up here, It'll clear the re sets all these down to down to zero. Um, and what I'd normally want to do on something like this is take the graduate filter, drag it nice and close together, put it up here, put that on there, get it kind of where I want it. This point now it's my horizon isn't 100 percent straight or anything like that um and then maybe whams if i darken the sky mm, not so good um maybe if i pull the highlights down that's a bit better push the um well let's go with dehaze what happens if i dehaze that Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go see this is half the fun of it um dehaze the other way Oh, yeah, if you take out the haze, it's white, okay? Let's not be haze. Um, let's bang the saturation up anyway. Let's make it kind of... Um, so you can do all these, basically all the normal edits, but you're only doing it to this area affected by the by the grad filter, and it's then fading out. Um, new one, um, which has arrived in the latest version of Lightroom. Turn away now, Paul. This is wasted on you. Um, and Leslie, probably. Yeah, yes. you can actually change the colours. So you can actually just adjust the hue. Um, so, oh, go away. Go away. Stop jumping up when I'm trying to. I, can, I hate to uh, tell you this, guys, but we've got something similar. It's just a, a thing with a, uh, a colour picker. You can just go through and it'll change the colour of the... That's this bit here, yeah? Yeah. Even on a yeah. map. Yeah, yeah, you can tip, tip, have it, put a whole shade over the whole thing. Yeah, yeah that's putting a whole shade over it. Whereas this that, is that, a that is more useful if you've, if you've isolated the colour and you want to change the, the colour of just that particular item. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this allows you to change the whole colour. But, yeah, it's, it's a different, different way of working. Um, and so that's you. Oh, hang on a sec, guys. Bear with me. You are going to. I've got to earn some money. Bear with me. Two sets. You're not looking at the password. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. Sorry, I missed your talk on, on Thursday, where I got called into work. Oh, right. I think it's going to be um, uploaded, Chris told me. It will be at some point when I, I've, I've cut it. I just couldn't get it to... Um... Might take a bit of time, Alan, but uh, 
Yeah, it was, it was an interesting chat. Everybody joined in, which was great. Yeah, so, it's good. When, so since then, if anyone's interested in, in street photography, or Chris is doing that, uh, I found a guy last night who's a Leica ambassador, purely by chance, and his name's Alan Schaller, S-C-H-A-L-L-E-R, Alan Schaller. He's a Londoner. Um, he goes around the world for Leica. His black and white work is astounding. And uh, he, do, he did a two-hour chat or an hour and a half chat with Leica, which is on YouTube. And uh, after about 15 minutes, the guy said, who's not a very good interviewer, said, and how long have you been uh, sort of using a camera? And he said, five years. I mean, you know, you need to see his work. If you, he, he shoots in the style of, uh, of Alan Norris, um, waiting for that opportunity. From him. And uh, quite... Quite amazing. I'm going to actually cut out some of the. His hat sadly hasn't got a book, um, but I'm going to cut out some of the images from YouTube and screenshot them and sort of you know collate them. But definitely worth viewing. Right. Like sorry. That. Sorry. Back in and we're back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about um, graduating field, this not we? So everybody okay with that as a basic concept before we start? How would you bring your lines closer and closer and further apart? Just grab the edges, put them together. Yeah. And, and there is a way, isn't there, Chris, of covering the whole screen with a grab by double clicking something? I'm sure I saw it on a on a tutorial somewhere. Do what, um, Warren? <laughs> At the beginning, as you pull, start, as you as you pull the thread, you can double click or perhaps hold a shift key, and it covers the whole screen. Because a I'm lot of people, that one. Okay, I'll have to look that up. Because a lot of people use a grad over the entire screen. Because I use it for skylight viewing, Chris. But I've seen some very effective use of changing the whole image relatively fast, um, just using the grad filter. Anthony Morgan. Well, yeah, double clicks don't seem to do anything with a shift click. No, I, I shift you're just doing a straight line. Chris, I, I was asking. It. I don't know. I was just asking the question. Yeah, no, I, can't, I don't know what that is. That's wrong. No. You can rotate them, and it rotates about the, the center spot. You can yeah. dra drag that left or right to change your pivot point. Yeah, it, I mean, I must say, the more I've read about it, it is an incredible tool. The grab tool. Yeah, so um, so that's. Is there always equal spacing between the graduated bit? Can you get the middle line slightly to the top or slightly to the bottom? No. Right, okay, thanks. Those two are either side of each other. But yeah, everything, everything above the top line is the, so, is the solid part of the grad. Yeah. So, right, okay. So, oh, if I, you're right. <clears throat> yeah. But to see that is. Uh, that's all black, yeah. Yeah. It would be all black if it's completely there. But so that's basically your, your grad. Um, I'm not going to do range masks today. I think it's probably a bit. Can I, can I just ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> if you want, say, a darker top but a lighter foreground, can you have two grads on the same image? What do you think? Yeah. Well, I'm assuming so, but how yeah, do you so, do it? How do so, you we've got, so we've got our grad here. We've done that. Yeah. I can either close or I can just do new. Where's the new? Sorry, I couldn't up, see it. At the top right. Where my cursor is. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, new. Yeah. Yeah. So you do okay. new and then we'll just do one, uh, another grad. Oh, I just realised I just switched it off. So new grad, right. yeah, got coming it. in from here, and this time we're going to make the uh, white, white balance don't make any difference really, um, I'll make it really, there you go, so we can make that area yeah. be bright if we want it. So oh. in theory you could have as many as you like. Really. Yeah. yeah, you could do, although they, don't forget they fill in from the, from the edge, so... Uh, 
you, you, you get trouble using using them in the middle of your picture to be fair yeah and if you like the grade you put on you want to use it somewhere else you can make a copy of it so if you right if you click on, right click on that you can say duplicate right and, click on and the then actual... you, yeah on the dot itself and then oh, now right. you can now you can move it to where you want right and then rotate it round brilliant Right. And it saves going through all you know, so I've set it up once and you want exactly the same again. Yeah. Or or another use for that, I think, if I am not mistaken. So um let's see if I can find something a bit more. Chris, the other the other thing, I know you're gonna go on to vignettes in a minute, but in answer to Paul's question, Paul, if you just wanted to do a three-sided vignette, then mm. then the grab tool is a way of doing it so that you've i mean, I mean um, if the subject's in the foreground and you don't want to vignette the subject but you want to vignette three sides of the screen then three grads works really well yeah yeah, yeah i can see that yep so um, <coughs> what you could do is you could put loads of clarity on something like that and then you could the jeff was saying duplicate it and every time you duplicate it you get even more clarity yeah or if you want to go the pull map um so let's undo that undo that undo that undo that undo that undo that so again we've got a graduated filter going left to right we might want to say um bang up the saturation on that oh we like a bit of saturation so let's um duplicate that and duplicate again and duplicate again till we reach the point where it gets I saturated. Gets to Paul's levels. Yes, that's what I guess. That's what I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I said. I thought you'd appreciate that by Paul, it's just for you, really. But yeah, so, yeah, I'll go with that. so that's actually a, the duplicate is actually a good way of getting more than so you can go over a hundred, you can go um, you know, two hundred clarity or three hundred clarity. Um not something I've ever used particularly much in real life, but it's, um, I saw Joe McNally do it once, so it must be all right. Um, so the next one along is the radial filter. So now the radial filter is, so it just appears here, it says. It's basically the same thing. So effectively we've got a circle here and then the effect, take the exposure down now the odd thing to me is that by default the radial filter works the other way around in that i've taken the exposure down and it's not taken the area inside the circle down it's taken the area outside the circle down which to me being a humble computer program makes no sense at all. Um, and Agree. I must, eh? Agree. I mean, yeah. First Agree. time I saw somebody use this, I thought to myself, what the hell is going on there? Why is it affecting the area he hasn't selected? Um, but we can, we can get a more my way of thinking way of working uh, by hitting the invert button there. And now we're, um, now we've made the exposure take the exposure down inside the circle um but i think what they do is they the the sort of use that they expect you to make of it is something like that so as a sort of a vignette for you um now warren was saying you could use a three-sided vignette using the um uh, right, right. red tool but what you could also do is do a three-sided vignette by taking one of these, stretching it like that, <coughs> moving it about, and there you go, there she's... Mm. If I can get my mouse off the top. If you hold the Alt key down, if you don't know, don't know this, Chris, if you hold the Alt key down, you can drag one side. Oh, right, yeah, sorry, yeah. But I can't drag it off the top of my screen is what I was trying to do. <laughs> Well, yeah. zoom one to two yeah yeah that'll do oh this, this is the other way doing it that'll do so you can just 
bend your so there you go that's um so if i close that close did i click what are we doing we wait thank you so there you go that's the that's the equivalent um vignette that warren was talking about using three grads you can do it using one radial filter brilliant yeah it makes sense um let's have a look at this beastie because this is um i think it was sorry it was jeff showed how to use it in a club meeting the other day a few weeks a few months back and uh it was, you were using it for a lot of targeted adjustments weren't you jeff i think um so what you could do for instance if we want to um so just emphasize this one once we got that we can leave it darkening around everything else we'll invert our selection because now we are selecting that one in the middle and we should in theory change the color of it um we've got a lot of feather on at the moment so if i take the feather down at the moment it's a bit solid do that You know, the trouble is, it's, it's a white object, Chris, so you probably have trouble. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm getting some sort of pink. <laughs> getting there slowly. But you could just make that one a slightly different colour, totally. Um, just the. I just wish they put a button on their constant luminance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, no, me. Don't go away. Um, so, uh, so that you can use that. But like I say, by default, it's in this inverted mode. So you can you're just changing the outside of it. Um, have, have I missed feather? Where was feather? Yes. Oh, I've got it right. Yeah, the right down the bottom. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because on the on the graduate filter, tool, feather sort of at the top, and there it's sort of. Yeah, and it's off the the sort of lighter grey screen as well, a panel, isn't it? Yeah, for some strange reason. Yeah, there are a lot of design decisions in Lightroom. I'm not. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so that'd be a traditional way of using the the thread, but you can use it to target different areas it's well worth having a play with that um so one of the things you could do is if you if you've got now i know now i know that you lot will never have a picture that's not completely sharp um <laughs> yeah um if you happen to have a picture that's not completely sharp but you still want to use it how do you make it look sharper well one of the things you can do is to make everything else around the outside of it look blurry um, oh, um so what we could do is we could oh let's clear, let's clear everything else um if we reduce the why don't you write me one message rather than 12? Um, take clarity, D height, oh no, D height, not D height. Take the clarity and the texture down. We can blur the area around it and make our bit look sharp and the rest look blurry. So it's another way of trying to uh, actually... Uh, the sharpness tool works quite well for doing that. Yeah, so, so, so that, that's the one I was looking for, actually. Sharpness as well. So you can actually blur the edges around it and just have your your bit, the bit you want to concentrate on, which in this case happens to be that yellow rope. Um, you have the yellow rope sharpened and everything else looking a bit softer. Top tip for if, I know this will never happen to you, but should you have a question that's not 100% sharp, blur the stuff around the thing you uh, you want to look sharp. Um, so that's pretty much it for the radial tool. So you've got you've you've got so we've got generalized adjustments. 
Um, we've got grids that allow us to come in from the edges to adjust stuff. And we've got circles that kind of, uh, or radial filters that allow us to affect the area outside of a circle by default or affect the actual area inside of the circle. You can, I didn't, I, sorry, I just assumed people were, was spotting what I was doing here, but let me just explain that you just, once you've got a circle on, so um, there like that, you can grab these little handles here to squish it. Or as Jeff said, you can alt squish it and pull it in another direct in one direction. Or if you get on between the lines, you can rotate it like that. So it's pretty, it's quite a, a heavy way of, or a sophisticated way of being able to select a particular area. Um, and you can decide what it is you, you, you want to concentrate on. You see this a lot these days. And that's so something if we did. Mm -hmm. There you go, that'd win you on a wall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> judge would judge would hate it <clears throat> into any of the big photography competitions, it seems to be the way to win. Um uh so uh, yeah, so that was, that was that was everything to do with that. So we got these two sort of bigger area filters, but what if we need to get into a specific area? Um, let's go back to our grid. Let's yeah, let's. I don't know whether it's something you can do or whether you're covering it a bit later. But like the one with the the beat charts, if you draw yeah. them down over that but then wanted to not have it affecting the beat charts. Is there a way you can take areas out? There is. Let's go straight to that. Um, didn't want to jump into too much in one go, but we'll go there. Um, so we've got this with this. Um, I was in the wrong module there. D for develop. If you're not in develop, you can't. there's loads of stuff you can't do. Right. <laughs> so go back to our graduated filter. So we click our graduated filter. And let's actually, yeah, let's drag it right down here. And for for emphasis, let's make it quite obvious where it is. Um, and then up here on the top, where it says it's got like new edit and brush. If you click on brush, you can actually change the area that's selected. So let's not have a huge gray. So a brush like that. So at the moment, uh, I'm just going to paint a bit more on. So I've just decided that my black area needs to come down like that. And then um, over here, down the bottom, you've got so you've got two brushes and an erase brush. If you click the erase brush, you can decide to remove it from this area here. And then we're just gonna adjust the exposure to something a bit more sensible. Well, they don't look pretty great. But you kind of get the idea, that's how you remove it. Does that make sense, Alan? Yep, thank you. So you've got these brushes, which is, uh, so you can have two sizes of brushes. One is A, and one is B. Um, and they, I've never really used both. I just pick up a brush and adjust it to the size I want. Um, and then use the erase tool to remove stuff. You ever use the A and B brush, Jeff? Uh, no, it's not use. It tends to be the one. Yeah, um, it does What I tend to do is though, you, it, you, if you press the Alt key down, it brings up the arrays. So it's, it's worth oh, playing right. with shift, yeah. control, and alt when you're in a function because they, it gives you other functions like it does in Lightroom as well. Yes. So, so that's paint on, alt, paint off. Yeah. And then when and you... If, if you decrease the flow, as in Lightroom, as you brush over an area, it either takes it away gradually or adds it gradually. So yeah. if you bring the flow right down, then you can paint it and do you know have lesser effects on it yeah so and there's and the feather is the uh again the edge of your brush so um so that's soft feather and then hard feather 
Not that much difference, really. Oh, because of the flow, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, playing with those together, what, get what you want. And now we've got some sort of alien invasion going on, so that's quite. <laughs> another, another top ten winner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might just stick some of these in competition to see what the judge said. <laughs> um, yeah, so so the final one, this is this brush tool, which is pretty similar to the brush tool we just sort of spoke about. Um, you've got all the same adjustments here um, and the size and stuff like that. But say we... Um, so we want to just darken down the edges rather than do a vignette we pick up a nice big brush um set the feathering up clear the effects turn the exposure down darken the area around him and first him go for a even bigger brush so you've got the auto mask unclipped have you? Yeah, because I'm just painting onto the surface. I'm not really trying to select anything in particular. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, and so now, what this is why the way I normally do with all this stuff is to bang it on at a high level and then just back it off till till I kind of get the effect I want. So I might it's a bit more here. So I'll teddy bears a bit more. A bit too much something like that why so, would i be getting it coming in in red ah uh, because you've got overlay mode on press o press o ah right yeah. where's overlay mode on the it's on the toolbar i think t and then the bottom. say again on the toolbar at the bottom show yeah. selected mask overlay down here oh, right. yeah that's the same as pressing O on the keyboard. Right, lovely, thank you. Actually quite like it in the red, to be honest. It looks a bit sort yeah. of backwards. Um, yeah. For those of us who are old enough to remember the backwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's what the brush allows you to do is that you can, so if for instance, you know, you want to get in and we want to, I don't know, um, Get in with a smaller brush and zoom in. Uh, and then, I don't know, add a, let's add a catch light to his eye, shall we? Because um, teddy bears need a catch light and the, the judge are like that. So we'll bang the exposure right up and we'll just draw a catch light in his eye. Like that. Um, fade it down a little bit. Maybe reduce the past here. Uh, yeah. I'll do, and then we do. Oh, now, what were done wrong? I was still on the same. Ah. Brush. So, if I do control Z. Yeah. Go back to where I was. I so just just control Z back through the history to get to what I want. Then I create a new brush. Yeah. Zoom in. And this time bang the exposure up. Paint the catch light in his eye. And one there. And then fit. And then you, you have to click to put the, the point down. Yeah, you have to, the idea is to put click to put the point down and then start brushing. Otherwise yeah. you end up just moving the point around. So you say you're extended, yeah. So, so I know what I did. Can't see what I did. Actually. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so that's all right. Just uh, that. Switch that off. There you go. As I'll tell you, with a terrible, terrible, terrible catch light. But he's still got a catch light in his eye, and the judges love that. Um, And again, with the same as we, I just showed you, you've got the option for an erase tool. So if I 
click on this brush here and then do the arrays, I can say make this step back to how it was. Yeah. Um, auto mask. Um, so let's get rid of that. And get rid of that one. Auto mask will allow us to say we want to make this um, white area behind his head a dark colour. Pick up the brush, click on auto mask, take the exposure down again. Um, get a moderate size brush, and we should be able to paint down there, and it should try not to over go over the areas. Now, because I've got the feathering quite high there, let's try and take it down. Should, should get a bit closer there. The idea of this is it should get, stop you overrunning the areas you don't want it to do with a brush. And we'll try to, uh, Repaint your walls for you. As with Photoshop, if you turn turn the flow down, as you're nearer to the object you get, you can just go over it and gradually get nearer and nearer for that final adjustment. Yep. So that's about it without going in a range mask, which we haven't got time for. Um, in fact, and then I'm just going to erase because I went over his ear at that point. Oh, no. Get his ear back. Then fit. And there we go. Quick rough job, but um, you get the idea. And it for the, those, that line of targeted adjustment tools up the top. Any questions? We've got three minutes. And I'm on to my next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Fucking sorry. Um, <laughs> video <laughs> meeting, video means just solidly. I, uh, I don't want to talk to people. <laughs> Not people from work. <laughs> no. No. Uh, You'll enjoy your retirement when you get there. Yeah, yeah, probably. So they tell me. Um, that all makes sense to everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's it. I've got two minutes before my next meeting. So, uh, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You for all the messages that came in while we were talking. <laughs> all right, then, folks. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.